Oh, vaporous light. Escaping from my open mouth and shaping this last word. My soul was sick with fright that I might shut my eye to light and die. Unheard. Wait until the stars turn cold And talking heads tell me they're told of the last page An ending where all my fears turn golden And my diamond tears hey! fall on the stage Hey! Hey mister! You're smudging the drawing! I'm sorry, I didn't, I didn't see it, I'm sorry. It's very nice, the drawing, it's brilliant. Thanks. You don't know where the Kent Hotel is, do you? Kent? Yeah, it's supposed to be on the street somewhere. It's over there. Bit late, isn't he? <laughs> How's your mom? Mom, mom is mom's great. She um, mom sends her regards. She says she says hello. She says hello. And your practice, good? Yes, sir. It's going well. We have we have several clients now. Uh, four or five. To, um, two. We have we have two clients at the clinic. It, it takes time. Who's the boy? Must be the new one. Jack, the journals have been raving since you graduated, and believe me, the honor is deserved. Honor? I'm... I'm not sure. I'd like you to meet. Brilliant men, each of them. Friends? Uh, who are Colleagues of mine. We meet again next Thursday. Well, I'm, I'm flattered. Where do these meetings take place? You may inquire at the X Club. You better let me do the talking. <laughs> the man himself. I'm sorry, gentlemen. Unavoidable delay, I'm afraid. Ah, Jack, good. Well then, gentlemen, I would like to introduce to you Dr. Jack Bell, the newest member of our assembly. Gentlemen, Mr. Bell, I'm sure Tick has given you a florid explanation for our noble purpose in meeting. 
Uh, he, he's told me some, sir. I see. To put it bluntly, we confess murders. Murders. Medical murders, of course. Which we define as the killing of any patient who puts himself trustingly in our care. Because confession is good for the soul? Not to ease our minds, but to improve them. Yes, well, um, thank you, gentlemen, for the honor of this uh, invitation. Very well, then. Let's begin with... Actually, I have such a confession. You uh, have a murder to confess. Yes. Well, that's wonderful. Perhaps later on, Jack, there are several cases ahead of you on the docket. Now then, Dr. Berman, I see. Eli? Well, there's not much to say, really. I had a... Um patient come in for a fluoroscopy. My assistant gave him a barium swallow and we put him under. Um, as we closely watched him, his gastrointestinal from the top to bottom seemed to mature into stone. And we came to his aid, of course, but even as we studied him, he showed signs of death and Fell on the floor. What the hell happened? It was a pharmaceutical error. The bottom of the bastard's glass was cake solid. He filled him with plaster. Bloody unassing. Death by sophomore. <laughs> Eli, what was the matter with your patient before he came to you? Belching. <laughs> Southside Clinic. Oh. Before operating on anyone in such acute pain, I would have certainly checked the heart. Well, you'd have been right. The autopsy showed an infarction of the right coronary artery. That's all. Right. Sir, can I go now? He has been squirming in his seat like a true criminal all night. Jack, there are still seven... I know, I realize that, sir, but I have well, to... It's not customary for newcomers to participate. I'll let the lad have a turn. I could go for a rest. Well, doctor, what have you done? All right, I'll give you the case in some detail, as I think... It, it, it contains as abstruse a problem as can be found in medicine. The, the boy, the patient, 17 years old. Brilliant. He wrote poetry. That's, that's how we met. I, 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 saw a, I saw a poem in the newspaper and I wrote to him and that's how we became friends. Rhymed poetry. Yes. The patient was sick for 10 days before I was called. I thought you said he was your friend. He was my friend. He didn't believe in doctors. No faith in him, eh? <laughs> he was he brilliant. He was brilliant. The patient began with sharp pains in the left side of his abdomen. They, they cleared but returned in two days with, uh, with a fever, high fever, and diarrhea. 
There was pus and blood in the stool, but no pathogenic bacteria. So I diagnosed ulcerative colitis and put him on sulfaguanidine with a, with a, with a high protein diet. But within a day, he developed a, a general tenderness of the abdomen and rigidity of the left rictus muscle. <laughs> Symptoms continued for two weeks and And early this morning, he died. And the autopsy showed you were wrong? I didn't do an autopsy. Well, then, how did you know you were wrong? By the simple fact that the patient died instead of being cured. Where did the patient die? At my clinic at the South End. Has there been any inquiry by the police? No, they hadn't, they hadn't heard of it. They seem to have committed the perfect crime. Well, indictments for the doctor's diagnosis are now in order. There's a catch to this. The only catch is the complexity of the case. What, have I stumped the X Club? You described the onset of pain before the diarrhea. Yes. Well, the temporary relief of symptoms sounds like ulcers, but for one point. What? I disagree. The patient's symptoms had nothing to do with ulcers. Would you mind backing that with science? Delayed onset of fever and diarrhea. That eliminates ulcers in 99 cases out of 100. Right, Dr. T? No ulcers. You mentioned a uh, general tenderness, uh, peritonitis? Uh, twisted gut. Volvulus means gangrene and death in two days, not two weeks. We can rule out tumors for the same reason. Appendix on the left side. Uh, late onset of pain will eliminate that. We've determined a perforation then. May we proceed with that? I hadn't thought of that. A, a perforation caused by what? 17 years old. Too old to be eating pins then. Unless. He had a taste for pins. Are you sure your patient wanted to live? He wanted to live more than anyone else I have ever known. A chicken bone would have lodged in the esophagus. So what does that leave us with? Death by object swallowed, no ulcers. Uh, spreading infection from his stomach to A fish bone. Precisely. Well then, if we're all agreed, Dr. Bell murdered his patient by treating him for colitis, when an operation to remove an abscess fish bone would have saved his life. Where, where the hell are you going? Where the hell are you going? Bell. What aren't you telling us? The doctor was right. There is a catch to this case. My patient is still alive. Now, gentlemen, I am sorry for breaking your, your rules, but your diagnosis is going to enable me to save his life. Gentlemen, you know the patient's condition? 
Uh, Dr. Hume, can you get the stethoscope so we can monitor the patient's uh, blood pressure? Talking heads tell me they're told of a last page. An ending where at all my fears turn golden and my diamond tears fall on the stage. <laughs> <laughs>